you are in FPV and you're considering going digital or you're thinking about, you know, should I go with DJI FPV? What are some reasons that you might not want to go with the DJI HD FPV system? I'm going to preface this by saying that I've had the system since early 2020. I have thoroughly enjoyed the system. This is my DJI Marmot build that I fly all the time. I also added the Flywoo Explorer. So I've been doing some nice range kind of style flying with this thing. And I got to tell you, I've gotten tons and tons of enjoyment out of my system. But some things have changed. There's been a lot that's changed actually since... I made my video regarding why I love the system and my overall experience in it. So things have changed in the hobby, things have changed in the world. I mean, just there's, a lot has happened. So let's discuss some of those things. So let's start with topic number one, which is hardware availability. Now, this is not something that just affects DJI only. However, DJI, because of the nature of the system, has been more adversely affected, and we're gonna talk about that. So, there is a global chip shortage. It is affecting every kind of micro processor. Some are affected more than others. One of the things that the chip shortage has caused a problem with, with in respect to the DJI system is the cameras, and the Vista unit in particular have been really, really hard to come by. Cadex themselves has said they've had a really hard time getting a hold of the chips needed to produce the Vista and the cameras. Suppliers are limiting stock of the air units because people are gobbling them up. <laughs> people are poaching them because you just can't get them. This shouldn't be happening. <laughs> this, this should just not be happening, but it is. And it's worse when it comes to DJI uh, because of the fact that only a select number of, uh, of manufacturers can produce cameras for the system. This is a Nebula Pro camera. This is an excellent lightweight DJI camera. And sometime, probably summer, early summer of 2021, this camera was just nowhere to be found. In my opinion, we've not really seen a good replacement for it at this time. The Cadex Polar camera came out, which is all right. It's got nice video quality, but it's lacking that ability to do 120 frames per second, which, you know, I, you're, I believe you're gonna see the difference between 60 and 120 FPS. And personally, I've just stayed away from so many DJI cameras, hoping that we would get out of this, hoping that we would get out of this chip shortage. I have not added models to my fleet this year in part because of that. I had an order for the Baby Hawk HD that was canceled because they couldn't secure the stock for the camera and the uh, video transmitter, the Cadex Vista. So this is just a really terrible situation, unfortunately. Here is a recent letter from STM Electronics Corporation that was posted in one of the FPV groups that I frequent. And basically, if you don't know this, the STM Electronics Controller is what most people flying FPV run. They are a major ARM processor. They see no sign of the global chip shortage showing down. Others in the industry are saying the same thing, that there just seems to be no end to the chip shortage. And if you're thinking about buying it right now, it's something that you're going to have to contend with. The second point is that development on the system seems to just have stalled. The last major update to the DJI HD FPV system was mid-2020. We went from 25 megabits to 50 megabits. That was an incredible upgrade. That was a huge upgrade. But since then, really not seen much of anything. We saw the version 2 goggles come out for the DJI HD FPV drone, and we saw the whole launch of that product. But that didn't give us anything on the hobbyist side, on the F traditional FPV side. But there are some problems that the system could really use some updates for. 
at, for example, very simple, the on-screen display. There are a number of elements that need to be added to the on-screen display. One of them is very simple, the warnings. Now with warnings, it's not that big of a deal if you're flying freestyle, but for something like the Flywheel Explorer, it would be great to have the warnings, especially since you're running a GPS, and there are so many GPS-based warnings that you really don't want to go without if you don't have to, and DJI just has not stepped up to either add additional warnings to what they already have, or implement the new way that Betaflight has allowed through the MSP connection to give on-screen display elements. Nobody can do this for DJI. DJI is the only one to be able to add those kinds of updates, and we've just not seen it from them. In fact, we've seen like no development at all, virtually no development at all, other than adding the polar cameras and stuff like that. We just see nothing from them. DJI just seems to be maybe abandoning us. Uh, no, I'm not going to go that far. But the lack of updates is concerning to me since it's at least been well over a year since we've seen anything significant. There's also a big elephant in the room that a lot of people don't like to talk about. They don't realize it. And it's that DJI, at the end of 2020, was placed on what is called the U.S. Entity Blacklist. A lot of people don't understand this, so I'll try to briefly explain it. When you are placed on the entity list, when your company is put on this list, it means that your company is not allowed to export technology from America. So what does that mean? It means that any American-made chipsets they're not allowed to use them. If it's American software, software is technically part of the export, although there are some ways around that. Technically or not, they're not supposed to be using it either. So it, let's say that there's some video transmission technology made here, intellectual property made here in America. DJI is not really permitted to use that. How does that affect DJI's development? How, how, how does it affect it? It is interesting and notable that DJI decided to give CADEX the ability to develop their air unit and camera combo. That's really strange. DJI is a multi-billion dollar company. What are they doing having a company like CADEX making that stuff for them? They say it's because of the chip shortage, but doesn't a chip shortage equally affect CADEX? Yes, it does. So that doesn't, to me, that didn't really even make any sense when we first saw that. And I just don't really know what to make of DJI and their position as a company with the entity list. That being said, I'm gonna counter myself here and say that we've seen so far no slowdown in DJI's release of camera birds. The Mini SE came out this year. Mavic 3 looks like it's coming out this year. We'll see what happens. Rumors are flying around. DJI did release that DJI FPV drone. So, so far, there isn't any indicator that other DJI product lines have been affected by this blacklist stuff. But I think it's something to stay on top of, to consider. The last company that was blacklisted, Yahweh, you might remember them, the phone company, they were able to stockpile chips that helped them continue to make phones for three to five years. And now they're coming to the end of that and they're struggling. So, you know, could the same thing happen to DJI at some point down the line? It is a bit of a concern. Let's talk about the age of the system. So the, the DJI HD FPV system is kind of old now, right? So it was actually released in July of 2019 to the public. You came with the original air units and camera. And you got to figure, it was probably at least in development for six months or more before that. So we're coming up on a system that is about three years old. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. But in DJI development terms, that's a long time. Uh, the, the older that you buy in to a product with DJI, the greater of a chance that something new is going to pop up. 
Um, the fact that they didn't update the system this year when they had the opportunity to do so with the DJI FPV drone kind of implies that you'd be more safe there and this is probably one of the lesser points but if they were to make a v3 is there a guarantee of backward compatibility with old systems i don't know i mean i don't know so it's it's uncharted territory and you'd definitely be buying in on the older end of the time frame uh, in terms of this product's life cycle at this point the last reason that you wouldn't want to buy the DJI HD FPV system, I believe, has been widely discussed, so I'm going to keep this one brief, and it's the variable latency. Now, if you're going to do racing, I would recommend not going with DJI. There's a very specific build that people want to fly for doing racing. What I'm seeing over there is that SharkBite, the, DJ, the SharkBite system, may end up becoming the digital HD system of the racers. DJI just doesn't seem like they've been able to get hold in the racing. If I'm wrong about that, you guys let me know. Racing is really not my thing. I'm a freestyle guy. I like to do the long range crew style stuff and the system's been great for that. But as far as I know, the answer is no for the racing. Variable latency in these goggles exists. It does. The question is whether or not you feel it, whether it affects you. Personally, it doesn't bother me for the type of flying that I do, and there are thousands of others who, who agree with me. But that being said, it is there. So don't buy the system if you're planning on doing anything with racing. So in conclusion, I kind of want to outreach to you guys for this. Uh, I want to know from you, what do you think of the state of the DJI HD FPV system? How do you feel about how DJI has treated us in the traditional FPV sector? Do you think that some of my points are warranted? Do you think they might be leaving us behind? Do you think we're ever going to get out of this chip shortage? Is there going to be a light at the end of the tunnel? Has it affected you and your flying? You know, one of the things that I liked about the system is that you had that confidence, right? Because you could see better. Well, now some of that confidence has been kicked back because you got to be careful don't break what you have unless you can stock up. And it's not a cheap stock up either. This stuff has not gotten any cheaper. It's either stayed the same or gotten more expensive. So, you know, all of this uh, has, has kind of put a little bit of a downer on my, on my system. But that being said, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this little talk. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please leave a like and subscribe if you aren't subscribed already. I got lots of videos coming up. Before I close this video, I, want, I do want to tell you guys, I have new analog goggles, OLED goggles, the uh, SkyZone Sky L4X. These are great. And I went in and I bought some Shark Bite. Yes, I'm cheating on you, DJI. I bought Shark Bite. Okay, so I'm going to be doing a Shark Bite build. I'm looking forward to seeing what Shark Bite does on the digital side of things. And I will be checking that out. All right, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you guys have any questions. And as always, you have a great day. I'm going to go do some flying. You guys take care.